Hey everyone, Protopawn here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, guys, we've got something different going on. Uh, as the reset of Ranked has happened, we are now back to Silver in our Masochist file. And along with everybody else who was in gold that we were trying to fight against, who had a lot more heavy-hitting meta decks than uh, what we're running with, uh, obviously. So we're going to give it a little bit of time to let them climb their way through Silver to get back to gold, and that way... We can navigate silver ourselves a little bit easier, get some wins in, get some more packs, get some more cards, you know the drill. So today we're doing something a little bit differently in the meantime. Today we're here on my normal account, and uh, I've decided to showcase the Exodia deck that I've personally built. It's not an OTK thing like, you know, the YCS deck. Even though I do have that deck, I did build it out. It was, it was fun trying to navigate that. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a trick getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's like, okay, cool. But again, it's not like an end-all, be-all thing. If you get interrupted a little bit too much, it kind of falls apart. So, um, And then, you know, the old school way of running an OTK deck with that was just a bunch of spells that just constantly let you draw, draw, draw. But I've come across that situation where... If you don't draw the right things, it kind of breaks your steam, and then you're basically just dead in the water. So, um, I've been crafting, you know, Exodia decks for quite some time now myself, trying to find out new strategies and, and ways of running the, the Exodia strategy in its entirety. And uh, through many iterations of my own personal play tests here and there, I've come up with uh, a system that's some pretty decently consistent obviously if you're coming across like a super insane meta deck you're kind of not gonna have a happy time playing the deck but on a semi-regular basis i'd say maybe out of every five duels you'll probably win at least two of the five duels if not three depending on obviously your luck coming across uh who you're playing against so let me go jump over to the deck list and I'll show you that and kind of explain some things. And then I've got a couple recaps uh, just showcasing different scenarios, how the, the deck runs for you that we can uh, we can watch and I can do like step by step of what was happening. So let's go jump over to the deck list. All right, here we are with the deck. Of course, we have our five pieces of Exodia because we kind of need that in order to run the strategy. And then uh, we have three copies of Battle Fader, which will, you know, as soon as our opponent declares in a direct attack against us, we can special summon this to the field, and it just ends the battle phase. It negates the attack, basically, and ends the battle phase. Um, if this is summoned this way, banish it when it leaves the field. That's no big case. It's just like, once we fire this off, it's all we need it for. We, of course, are running three copies of Max C. It, it does come up to where, you know, if we're going second and our opponent decides to, you know, blow up and use, you know, a bunch of summons, you know, special summons, we can just draw a lot this way. We are then running three copies of Sangin. You all know what Sangin does. This is sent from the field to the graveyard. Add one monster with 1,500 less attack from the deck to the hand. Uh... We have two copies of Witch of the Black Forest, you know, doing the, re the, the reverse of it. Add one monster with 1,500 or less defense from the deck to the hand when it's sent from the field to the graveyard. Of course, both of these things, effects, can only activate once per turn per each card. But it, it is worth noting that, like, you could probably run a third copy of Witch, but it's really not needed. A lot of the times, you know, three Sangins and... Two Wish of the Black Forest, that's a card for each piece. And a lot of the times, in all honesty, there's a way that I like to play this. It's like, if one of these gets sent, and I don't have a Battle Fader, or maybe I don't have a Max C in my hand, sometimes I go and grab those things first to pr possibly protect us, or possibly draw cards. So, you know, it just depends on the situation, but I think just three and two is more than enough. Of course, we're running three Ash Blossoms. No big explanation there. We have one Legendary Exodia Incarnate in the deck. This kind of helps us cycle cards out of uh, the deck if we need to. A lot of the times, you know, it, situationally, of course, 
uh, we get this on the field and it just starts bringing cards back from the graveyard to our hand. Um, we are running two Swords of Revealing Light. Great way to stall out our opponent. Obviously, you know, if they have some sort of back roll removal, well, it is what it is. But usually, I, it's funny when people will sit there and be like, okay, three turns. And then you'll draw the second sword. It's like, okay, six turns. And at that point, you've basically won the, the duel. Because if you can cycle some of the, the strategies out with this, you're going to be fine. Of course, we have our one copy of Monster Reborn. Really good way of getting one of these that got destroyed on, you know, your opponent's turn. You get this out of the graveyard. You get this onto the field. Now you have two things to go into links. We'll, we'll do the extra deck here in a little bit. But it I've, Monster Reborn, very good for the deck. Three copies of Upstart Goblin. You all already know. You're drawing one card, gaining 1,000 life points. Enough said there. We have our one pot of extravagance because we really don't care about our extra deck so much. We do tap into it every now and then, depending on the situation. Um, but yeah, so we have that. Monster Reincarnation. I can't tell you guys how many times I'm like, oh, I have four pieces of Exodia in my hand, and the last one's in my graveyard because of, you know, maybe it got sent there with Obliterate. We're running one copy of Obliterate in here. But we have another card in our hand that we no longer need. We activate Monster Reincarnation. We swap it out. We have Exodia. Yeah, I, I have people don't see this play coming a lot. This card is very good in the deck. It's a very good way to get that last piece out of the graveyard if one gets stuck there. We have one copy of Galaxy Cyclone. Uh, this and of our one copy of Mystical Space Typhoon. If on our opponent's turn, if we've been using once again Obliterate to get cards into our graveyard, right? And let's say we only need that one extra copy that's left in the graveyard, and we have four copies of our or four pieces of Exodia in our hand. We can use this on our opponent's turn, or this on our turn, uh, to target one set spell or trap on the field. Maybe we haven't activated this yet, and we have four cards in our hand, and this is set. We can set this, activate this on the same turn, blow it up. This thing's secondary effect. You know, kicks into play, we get that last piece of Exodia out of the graveyard, boom, five copies. Or five pieces, I should say. Very good cards to have in the deck. It's good for our own removal purposes. Two called by the graves, you never know when you're going to need to ash blossom, you know, negate an ash blossom for, you know, you drawing or whatever. You got your three imperms, don't really need to say too much about that. A copy of Chicken Game, don't really need to say much about that. Uh, there's very, very limited draw effects in this deck. We still have them, but for the most part, we're searching cards with Sangan and Witch of the Black Forest. Um, another good card, you got Solemn Judgment in here. Of course, we have Obliterate. We have uh, Skill Drain, very useful. I'll showcase a, a duel that we I used this in, really came into play and really helped us out. And we have a copy of Dogmatic of Punishment in here. Just in case we need to wipe something problematic off our opponent's board while we have, like, swords up and, you know, we're just kind of buying time and whatever. Dogmatic Punishment, Send Natis here. Now we pop two cards off of our opponent's field. Bada bing, bada boom. Two copies of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon just in case, you know, let's say we hit Pot of Extravagance. Natis gets hit and... You know, a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon gets hit. We have another copy, possibly, to, you know, Dogmatic of Punishment. Just basically pop almost anything on the board at that point. We're kind of hitting the extra deck right now, as you can see. Now, some pretty good links. You got your common links, like Nightmare Cerberus, uh, Nightmare Phoenix, and, of course, Nightmare Unicorn. Very good for the decks. Just kind of staples, just to get through things. You've got... the uh, Skull Dread here, if you can meet the requirements for this, you know, popping Witch, a Sangin, maybe a Battle Fader, you know, you never know what your, your setup is if you're behind swords and you've been setting up. Get this thing on the, the field, draw four cards, these things, you know, Sangin and Witch effect goes in, now you're drawing two more cards, all that good stuff. It's, it's really helpful. Um, Appalooza, of course, you never know when you're going to have to get into a situation where you're negating your opponent from doing stuff. 
and of course access code talkers in here if you just need to get an actual win using this deck if like exodia falls apart you still have a way of coming back and just winning the duel anyway with access code talker now let's get into some of the smaller links here this card is probably by and large the most important link monster in the deck clara and rushka one normal summoned or set monster is required to summon this out and it cannot be link summoned except during the main phase two this card is a very good surprise for your opponents they, they don't see this coming you play a sangan maybe it's like the last copy or your wish of the black forest and you're looking for that last piece of exodia you get this on the board you get this on the board go to main phase two you just link it away boom you got your exodia piece uh, and then this this is just a good uh, normal code talker for just two links you know two effect monsters Again, a situation where you can link off a Sangin and a Witch of Black Horse together to get two copies or two pieces of your Exodia strat out of your deck right there. So all in all, this deck is fairly consistent in how it operates. It just, of course, depends on who you're fighting. But let's go get into some examples of this deck uh, functioning the way that, you know, it's built. Let's go get into some duels. All right, here is our replay number one. As you can see, we started with two maxis in our hands, Monster Reborn, Upstart Goblin, and a Called by the Grave. Now, we ended up winning the coin toss or our opponent decided to let us go first. Didn't matter in this case. We were going first this game. So first thing I did, of course, Upstart Goblin, draw a card, set the skill drain, set the Called by the Grave, pass. That's all we could do. Now our opponent goes, and he's playing like Utopia, right? So he activates this, we're gonna activate our Max C, we're gonna have a fun time now. Max C resolves, perfect. He, he gets the Magical Mallet, he's going to also get a Hyper Rank Up uh, Magic Utopia. He's gonna put down the Tin Gold Fish, Special Summon the ZS, go into uh, Normal Utopia. Obviously we've drawn a card, Got the Witch of the Black Forest. Now we've got a Mystical Space Typhoon. He goes in further special summoning into Utopia Ray. And then he's going to activate the Hyper Rank Up, targeting Utopia Ray. We've got a Pot of Avarice in the meantime. Or a Pot of Extravagance, I should say. He goes into number 99, Utopia. Sends away his two cards to, of course, get into the number 100. And as you can see having maxi really helpful for this deck we've got two witches and a sangin let's continue he goes to activate his card in the the graveyard we activate skill drain now this just can basically sealed our victory for this game because this guy could barely do anything he goes to try to monster reborn the utopia so we decide to call by the grave and let that resolve and now bye bye utopia you're not getting that back in this game sir not at all of course, seeing how it is, you know, turn two, he is going to swing and get 3,000 damage into us, but that's not going to matter. I'm going into turn three here. We go for our first draw. We get our first piece of Exodia, the most important part, the head. We activate our pot, send away six cards, draw. We get Imperm and the second piece that we need for Exodia. Continuing the play, we're going to set one Witch of the Black Forest and one Mystical Space Typhoon. Never know when we're going to need that. This guy apparently doesn't remember he's under skill drain, so he tries to activate his effects, but to no avail because right now they're technically normal monsters on the field. Seeing how he really couldn't do much, he's going to attack into Witch of the Black Forest, which is going to, of course, allow us to draw our third piece of Exodia. And at this point, the game is over. We're gonna draw for turn, of course, get Upstart Goblin, but we don't even need to activate that because in this situation, we have already a Witch of the Black Forest and a Sangin in our hand, most importantly Sangin, and we have a Witch of the Black Forest in our graveyard. So obviously we're gonna go into the Monster Reborn, get our Witch back, then we're gonna summon out the Sangin and link away into the Code Talker 
that we've got in our extra deck. And with Witch and Sangin popping for the first time this turn, we're going to basically get to draw both of our last two pieces of Exodia, and this game gets wrapped up. That is one scenario of how this deck works. All right, here is the second showcase duel. Uh, this deck right now that we're using in this specific duel was a slight variation that happened before the current deck, but it basically plays out the same exact way. This was during a time that Pot of Extravagance was still at two copies. So we had that in the deck. Uh, we also had uh, remove trap in this deck because I hadn't pulled the uh, one uh, Galaxy Storm card that we have or whatever the heck it's called um, and I also wasn't running mystical space typhoon in this deck um, So this was our way of removing Obliterate But once I realized hey, we can actually use mystical space typhoon and or the other card when we drew it uh, Remove trap just wasn't cutting it. Obviously, it's not a good card in the slightest compared to the other two so that was a difference. I was playing Gozen match in this. I don't remember why it be so this got taken out. This doesn't even come up in this this duel. And uh, we were only running one copy of Sangin in this deck at the time. So, you know, the differences really changed uh, when it came to, you know, editing this deck to its final current state. But basically, this this duel plays out basically similarly to how the deck would be running with the adjustments in it. So let's go over it real quick. Obviously we go first here. We set uh, the Sangin and we play the Swords of Revealing Light and we pass. Our opponent is actually playing a Galaxy deck. So he ends up playing Galaxy 100. We go in for the Ash Blossom, which goes through. We stop him dead in his tracks and he ends up ending his turn setting two cards. We go into our draw phase. We end up pulling a second Ash Blossom, which is nice. Uh, we flip the Sangin. We go in for a thousand damage, and then we link away the Sangin into our first copy of Clara and Rushka. And instead of going into a piece of Exodia, we go in for the Max C, because we're not trying to completely, you know, showcase what we're playing, but we end up using the Monster Reborn to bring back the Sangin. So that way we have it again, ready to go, just in case he, you know, outs our swords and goes in for some attacks. Uh, that was kind of the thought process behind that. Again, you know, trying to fool our opponent to thinking we're only playing Sangin because we wanted to go into a, you know, Max C, or in a moment, as you'll find out, we're gonna link away these two into Code Talker and we're going to, once again, use Sangin. But again, we're not going for Exodia yet. We go into the Battle Fader because we need these key pieces just in case Swords goes away and we don't have Exodia yet. So drawing these pieces, far more important than just trying to bum rush Exodia right now. We go to the Battle Phase. We unfortunately get Mirror Forced. And... Uh, not much more that we can do so we just end the phase right there knowing that our swords is protecting us and if worse comes to worse we have battle fader ready to go this guy goes into just passing turn after setting another card we draw imperm we set the arm imperm and we pass the turn now in this state there's not a whole lot for us to do but he's going to start trying to special summon so we go in for the max c seeing that uh his soldier here is a very special summonable card and we're well aware of that so we go in for that max c he draws his card we get pot of extravagance off of our draw he goes in for some more uh, special summons and we just keep drawing we get a second copy of our pot another imperm and he's just trying to pop off right now he has no idea what's about to hit him coming up soon we're eight turns into this duel by the way we draw our second leg of Exodia, so we're kind of picking up steam there, dwindling down what we actually have to get out of the deck. He goes in for his direct attack, we hit down the Battle Fader, ending the turn, and he goes in for another special summon on his way out, drawing us another card. And he just keeps going, and he ends right there. And now at this point, we have two pots. 
you know, upstart goblin. We have our summoner in hand. Our hand's looking pretty good. We draw, skill drain, perfect, set. We're going to go in for the draw, call by the grave, set, set another imperm. Now we have two imperms on the board just in case we have to negate any of this stuff happening here. And we have blue dragon summoner on the field. We're all set to go with all of his attacks. We've got some defense going. We're looking pretty good. We go in for our second max C, which he's not seeing coming, of course. So, you know, he's going to special summon. We're going to draw Exodia Incarnate. He's going to draw another card. He's going to activate his soldier yet again. Special summon, get another upstart. And then he goes in for a third special summon here. And then we're going to draw another Imperm. We activate Skill Drain at this point because we see the uh, Infinity coming a mile away and we want to get the Skill Drain's effect off before this thing gets its effect off. We draw our second copy of the Swords of Revealing Light, which is just great. We activate the Blue Dragon Summoner. We get the third piece of Exodia that we need. He goes in for 6,100 damage and he's like, okay, I just have to get him next turn. But you know our hands looking pretty good we activate pot we've already drawn sangin we're looking pretty good we end up going in to draw after he gets his <laughs> cyber dragon infinity negated because skill drain we get our two cards we get our fourth piece of exodia being the head we activate the chicken game but it doesn't even matter because we're going to go into the sangin we're just going to go to main phase two we're going to link it away for another copy of Clara and we're gonna go in to draw our last piece of Exodia this is what I'm talking about this deck is very consistent as far as how it works it really just depends on who you're fighting if you're fighting somebody that's not playing a super crazy insane meta deck you have a really good shot of pulling this off let's go check out our third and what is going to be our final showcase for this deck all right in this third video we are playing the deck that i showcased the deck list for in its current iteration we start with dogmatic punishment in perm skill drain a monster reborn and a battle fader our opponent is going first unfortunately but it is what it is and this is what we got to showcase is us going second with a hand that isn't all that great big saving graces though we have three really good trap cards but first we're going to go into upstart goblin we're going to go into the chicken game activate the chicken game grab another card set our other two traps and we're all set to go battle fader in hand to stop any attack this guy uses the chicken game to unfortunately draw and then he unfortunately activates the harpy's feather duster not looking so good for us right now but apparently this guy didn't have much other than a set and pass. So we go into the, our pot, drawing our so two cards. We're going to put down the Witch of the Black Forest. And we're going to pass. Pretty simple play right there. He goes into his own pot. He's going to draw two cards. He's going to flip the Magician of Faith, grabbing his little Nightmare Steel Cage. He's trying to, you know, make us not be able to attack, but it doesn't matter because we don't really attack with this deck. We go in for our set of Sangin and we pass. I'm just trying to wait him out, see what he's going to do. He goes into going into defense position and passing. We draw our first piece of Exodia. We're looking good. Steel Cage goes away. It's his turn. We're just waiting ourselves. This guy, of course, wasn't playing the greatest deck either. And I almost question if, if he was actually playing Exodia himself. I don't think he ended up playing Exodia himself. But uh, he pops our Witch. We go in for the Head of Exodia. And we're looking pretty good right now. Draw phase. We get our Max C. Don't really think we're going to do too much with that here. Go in for the Monster Reborn on Witch. Which is perfectly fine. We're going to pop these two cards of course going into a link summon after we've set actually we play a battle fader we go in for the mystical space typhoon on his summit limit that way we can keep going here we go in for a triple link here going into our nightmare unicorn 
that way we can just activate Sangin, activate Witch, grab whatever we want out of the deck. We're going to send away the Maxi because we knew we weren't going to use that in this case. We were going to pop and send away the Swords of Revealing Light. And we, of course, we're going to draw our two pieces of Exodia. Now all that we need left is one more. We go in for the attack and we're sitting pretty here. At this point, all we need is one piece of Exodia, which is really good. He activates another Swords of the Revealing Light, and he passes his turn over to us. We draw, we have Solemn Judgment, of course we're going to set that and we're going to pass, because we can't attack, of course, on this turn. He goes to draw, he activates his card's effect, he burns us for 300, plays another card, passes his turn. We go into our draw phase, we get the Battle Fader, which is nice. We activate the Monster Reincarnation, bringing back the Witch of the Black Forest, playing Witch, and at this point, y'all know it's already over. Bringing out the Code Talker, setting it in front of him, activating Witch. He goes into playing Summon Limit again, but it doesn't matter. The game is already over, and he just didn't realize it. But anyway, guys, that's how this deck works. Again, fairly consistent. As long as you're not playing some insane meta deck, you have a pretty good chance of pulling this off. I hope you enjoyed this deck, guys. Uh, I know I do. It's taken me a long, long road getting the deck to its current iteration, and it definitely works better than a lot of the other strategies I tried to incorporate into getting Exodia into my hand. Uh, but I'm not going to get into the details of the different iterations of decks because I would be here all day and we don't have time for that. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like. If you aren't subscribed and you like the video, you like the content, uh, please subscribe. Go check out the Mascus Challenge. I'm sure you're going to enjoy that. And we're going to be getting back into that challenge here shortly enough as it is. And uh, until next time, guys, stay safe out there. Take care. I'm Protopawn. Peace.